Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about a fantasy action film called Bleach. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere in the countryside of Japan, Ichigo is walking home with his mother on a rainy day. The boy sees a young girl in white dress standing on the edge of the river and wonders why she's there by herself. Ichigo runs to offer the girl help, while the boy's mother chases him closely behind, telling him to stop. Suddenly, the girl turns around and causes Ichigo to faint. When the boy wakes up, his mother is mortally wounded after trying to protect him from the girl, who turns out to be a vengeful spirit. Many years later, Ichigo has grown up to be a young man, and he's now used to the ability of seeing spirits wherever he goes, even trying to help them whenever he can. He goes home that night after school and notices a strange woman standing in the room as well. It turns out that she's a soul reaper named Rukia, and the woman's equally surprised that Ichigo can sense her presence. Their conversation is interrupted when the soul reaper feels an evil presence close by, causing Ichigo to run downstairs to his family, only to see his sister hiding in the corner after hearing a scary voice. Suddenly, an explosion breaks the walls and a giant hand grabs onto the girl, taking her away right in front of the main character. Ichigo rushes outside immediately to save his sister, only to see a large monster standing in front of him. The man gets knocked away like it's nothing, while Rukia charges in and slashes the creature, forcing it to drop the girl on top of Ichigo. The woman explains that the monster is an evil spirit known as a hollow, and it was attracted by Ichigo's unusually high spiritual powers. Before they can finish talking, the creature attacks Rukia by launching its head, while she blocks the monster and barely knocks it back in time. She tries to launch her own attacks, but is quickly captured by the hollow as it charges up a large amount of energy in its mouth. Luckily, Rukia is able to break free using her spells and knocks the monster flying in the air while she drops onto a car. Ichigo runs towards the Soul Reaper and realizes that she's badly hurt from the previous fight. Rukia tells the man that she has to transfer her Death God powers to Ichigo by stabbing him so that he may fight the monster and save their souls. Seeing that the creature has recovered so quickly from the attack, the man has no choice but to accept her offer as she stabs him using her sword. The hollow charges forward to attack, but a shadow slashes the monster and lands closely behind the giant. It turns out that Ichigo has successfully gained the powers of a soul reaper, as he cuts off the spirit's arm in a single strike. The monster charges in furiously, but Ichigo is able to slash the hollow right in the middle, splitting the creature in half as it vanishes from the human world. Ichigo wakes up the next day, thinking that it was all a dream, but is quickly brought back to reality after seeing a large hole on the walls. Surprisingly, his family seems to have lost all their memories of the previous night and thinks that it was a truck that broke in. The man goes to school like usual, but after seeing his friends in the classroom, he's shocked to see Rukia walk in as well, pretending to be a new student. The girl grabs Ichigo right away and tells him to not say a word, threatening to kill him if he does. Rukia explains that she can't go back to her dimension known as the Soul Society because she accidentally gave all her powers to Ichigo. She needs to get them back right away or else she won't be able to fight any hollows and be trapped here forever. Rukia puts on a special glove and charges towards Ichigo, pushing his soul out of his body. She grabs onto the man's giant sword and tells him to stab it into her body, so that he can release all his power into her once again. Unfortunately, the ritual didn't work as Ichigo's energy level is apparently very important right now. The only way they can successfully transfer the power is if the main character got stronger through training, or else his body will not survive the process. Ichigo is not very fond of this idea, as he only wants to go back to his normal life. He returns home later that day, only to find that Rukia is hiding inside his closet as she has nowhere to go. Ichigo tells her to get out right now, but she refuses, telling the man to accept his fate. Their argument is interrupted by Ichigo's father, who barges in after hearing a woman's voice. He knocks the son away and opens the closet doors, only to see that it's empty inside. The father tells Ichigo to not bring any girls home and warns him about the child supports that he'll have to pay, speaking from the man's own experience after having so many kids. Rukia begins training Ichigo the next day, but the man is barely able to keep up and clearly lacks the necessary motivations. She gives Ichigo a wooden sword and proceeds to show him the art of Kendo, but the main character is not able to land even a single hit as he swings the weapon like a madman. 
At the same time, a Soul Reaper with red hair named Renji informs his captain Byakuya that they have lost track of Rukia, as her spiritual energy has vanished, suggesting that she gave her powers away. The captain orders the Soul Reaper to find her whereabouts, as giving one's power to a human is punishable by death. At night, Ichigo is heading home from school, but quickly notices a presence following behind him. He tells the Soul Reaper to show himself, and Renji is surprised that the human can actually see him. The Reaper demands to know the whereabouts of Rukia, but Ichigo plays the fool and tries to protect her, realizing that his friend may be in trouble. Renji becomes annoyed at the man's obvious deceit, drawing his sword and rushing in to attack. Luckily, his attempt is quickly stopped by a flying arrow that grazes over the Reaper's head, forcing him to hide and giving Ichigo the chance to escape. The main character goes home and tells Rukia about the other Reaper, demanding to know the truth, but the girl only tells him that he has to train or else he'll definitely be killed. The next day, Ichigo is confronted by a man in glasses named Ishida who seems to know about his Soul Reaper powers. The man reveals that he also has unique powers just like Ichigo because he's from a tribe known as the Quinshi who were mostly wiped out by Soul Reapers. Ishida shows the ability that he possesses as he forms a bow using spiritual energy, revealing Feeling that he was the one who saved Ichigo last night. He demands Ichigo to fight him in order to avenge his people from the Reapers, but the man refuses even after being threatened. With no other choice, Ichida plans to lure out the Hollows and force Ichigo to fight by throwing a bait into the cities below. Rukia senses the presence of evil spirits and rushes towards Ichigo, forcing him to become a Soul Reaper so that he can protect the innocent people. They rush towards the park, only to see the soul of a boy that he saved earlier being chased by a giant spider-like monster. Ichigo runs at the creature and attacks furiously by using his giant sword, but the monster is able to evade quickly, not allowing him to land any effective hits. The Reaper is also able to dodge the attacks from the monster as he runs desperately away from the giant legs. Eventually, Ichigo becomes tired and lowers his guard, causing the Hollow to land a strike that knocks the Reaper flying across the field. Before the monster can finish the kill, it's quickly cut in half by Renji, who's located them by tracking their spiritual energies. He turns towards Ichigo and rushes forward using incredible speed, pointing his sword towards the man before any reactions can occur. Ichigo tries hitting back, but is knocked flying towards towards a tree and quickly disabled by a devastating kick in the face. Before Renji can finish the man off, Rukia rushes in and tells him to stop, but this only angers the Reaper as he can't understand why she wants to protect a lowly human. Their arguments are interrupted when Captain Byakuya appears in front of them and reveals that he's actually Rukia's brother. He demands the girl to take her power from Ishigo even if it means killing the man, as this is the only way that her crimes can be forgiven by the Soul Society. Rukia refuses as she doesn't believe in killing a human who's innocent, especially since it was her who put him in the current situation. Seeing his sister's resolve, Byakuya gives her until the next full moon to regain her powers or they'll kill Ichigo themselves. Rukia quickly brings her friend back to his body and heals him using her special herbs, but Ichigo is unsure of what they can do next as the power difference is clearly too great. As time goes on, Rukia also realizes that Ichigo will never be ready, especially after the damage he took from the previous fight. She decides to gamble their chances by striking a deal with her brother, telling the men that they'll use Ichigo as bait to lure out a massive hollow known as the Grand Fisher. Rukia promises to slay the monster in order to amend her crimes and begs her brother to spare Ichigo's life. Despite the woman's pleas, her brother refuses to grant her wish and instead questions her loyalty towards her family. Renji becomes furious at Rukia's continuous defiance, calling Ichigo nothing more than trash and not worthy to be saved. Their arguments are interrupted by Ichigo who shouts for them to stop after following his friend to their location. He agrees that he'll slay the Grand Fisher only if they promise to let Rukia go. Renji decides to attack Ichigo right away, but surprisingly, his captain stops him and takes the deal, believing that the man will be killed as a result. Ichigo begins training with Rukia, and this time he takes it very seriously unlike before, as he wants to prove his capabilities and most importantly, to protect his friend. The man is able to improve dramatically in a short amount of time, even learning how to control his spiritual pressure and use it as a weapon. They begin to look for the Grand Fisher, as the monster should have picked up Ichigo's increase of spiritual energy 
energy. The two follows the trails and arrive to see a giant monster that eventually morphs into the little girl that killed Ichigo's mother, implying that they're the same creature. Ichigo transforms into a soul reaper and charges at the hollow, slashing its tentacles furiously using his sword. He leaps forward and stabs the monster right in the center, but soon notices that his mother was the one who took the damage from the attack as the woman appears in front of him. The man's inner guilt becomes the illusion created by the monster, and he barely escapes the attack in time thanks to Rukia. The hollow finally morphs into its true form which resembles a giant beast, prompting Ichigo to charge in with anger, trying to avenge his mother. The two arrives inside the city, and the monster causes tremendous damage as it chases after the Soul Reaper, destroying everything on sight. The creature crashes into buildings and tosses the people around, ravaging the entire city as it tries to devour Ichigo. The Soul Reaper tries desperately to avoid the monster, but its tentacles are difficult to evade, forcing Ichigo to constantly defend for his life. The Hollow is able to eventually grab onto the man using its claws, trying to crush the Reaper under its tremendous weight, but Ichigo refuses to give up the fight. Suddenly, an arrow is shot at the monster and knocks it away from the man, revealing that Ishida is here to help as well. The Quincy dodges the creature's attacks and fires numerous arrows, but the Hollow is able to deflect them easily. While distracted, Ichigo charges at the monster and runs underneath, cutting the creature from below. However, this seems to have only angered the evil spirit as it screams furiously at the sky, causing a giant tornado to form. It strikes at both of them, forcing Ichigo to hide inside a bus to avoid the attacks. The monster follows the man and proceeds to attack the reaper from the outside, eventually grabbing onto Ichigo and lifting the entire bus at the same time. Ishida aims at the monster and shoots the arrow, managing to strike the hollow right on the eye. The creature becomes furious and rips the bus into pieces, but also giving Ichigo the chance to strike from above and splitting the monster's head, finally avenging his mother's death. The hollow screams in agony as it falls down on the ground, vanishing quickly into thin air. Rukia rushes towards her friend to make sure that he's alright, while Ichigo returns her warmness with a smile. However, before they can celebrate, Ishida is stabbed in the back by Renji, who's here to finish the main character despite their previous deal. Byakuya gives the girl a final chance to redeem herself and orders her to kill Ichigo, stating that Soul Reaper should never befriend a human. No matter how much her brother tries to convince her, Rukia is not able to give up her friend, causing the captain to order Renji to exterminate both of them. The Soul Reaper charges at Ichigo with the intent to kill, forcing the man to defend himself and Rukia at the same time. Renji's attacks are too fast and vicious for Ichigo to fend off continuously, eventually sending him crashing towards the cars, but unlike before, he's finally able to see the Reaper's movements, making victory now a possibility. Ichigo charges towards the enemy and they continue to exchange a barrage of strikes, but the man is quickly forced into a defense, not being able to counter any of the attacks. Renji knocks Ichigo around and forces him backwards, but this time he's able to throw the enemy away and eventually lands a kick on the Reaper's body. Renji becomes furious and strikes back immediately, kicking Ichigo in the face and knocking him away using a devastating strike. The Soul the Reaper decides to finally show his true power by releasing his sword Zabimaru into the second form and launching the weapon towards Ichigo like a spring. The man dodges the attacks desperately as he runs for his life, not being able to adjust to the increased range from the enemy. Renji eventually grabs onto Ichigo using his sword and tosses the man away like a ragdoll into the piles of cars. The Reaper then throws a vehicle at Ichigo, causing a large explosion upon impact, burning everything in sight. Before Renji is about to finish off Rukia, Ichigo emerges from the chaos to everyone's surprise and assures the Reaper that he won't be defeated so easily. Ichigo charges towards Renji and deflects the attacks from the enemy, cutting through the Reaper's weapon and sends him crashing into a bus. Seeing that his man is clearly defeated, Byakuya decides to join the fight and tells Renji to retreat. Ichigo runs forward and slashes at the captain, but the Soul Reaper disappears in front of him and grabs onto his sword using only two fingers. The man tries to attack again, but is quickly cut in the stomach by the captain and falls towards the ground. Surprisingly, before the captain leaves, Ichigo manages to get up and attack once more, but his weapon is quickly stopped and he's cut down with blinding speed. No matter how many times Ichigo falls, he refuses to stay down as he needs to protect Rukia no matter the cost. 
Byakuya becomes frustrated at the man's stubbornness and strikes him a final time across the face, knocking Ichigo to the ground once more. Amazingly, the man refuses to give up and grabs onto the captain, telling him that it's not over. The Reaper becomes furious and finally decides to kill Ichigo himself, but Rukia saves the man by knocking him away, calling him a lowly human. She strikes her friend and prevents him from getting up, telling Ichigo that she's tired of him, while trying desperately to hold back her tears. Rukia promises her brother that she'll go back to Soul Society and be judged for her sins, so that they don't have to kill any more people. The woman takes Ichigo's sword and stabs it into herself, taking away the man's power as everything turns into white. Ichigo wakes up the next day, with all his wounds gone and feeling like everything was a dream. He goes back to school and sees all his friends, but senses that someone very important is missing. He opens the textbook inside the desk and sees the writings from Rukia, causing him to smile once again. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.